Today, I'd like to create an entry point for little playlist, which is going to explain to business people how to leverage the power of machine learning and IT. And the reason why I have decided to do that is because I'm getting um, same questions over and over again, and maybe it's going to be easier to just uh, create a link to some uh, simple explanation video or uh, some case study which is going to help to understand how to apply particular technology in order to solve some business cases. Uh, as for me, most of my work uh, is related to computer vision. However, we will touch other areas as well. So, in order to begin, first you want to understand uh, how a neural network is working. And uh, so, the thing is, the neural network here on the image is uh, this fancy brain with uh, color bulbs. So, so. If we take as an example regular human brains, so what happens with us? We just see millions of cats, different ones, and millions of dogs. And we learn how to extract particular features out of those images. For example, cats do have different ears or eyes and noses and paws or whatever, mouses and so on. And that means, that means when we see an image, for example, this little cat here, uh, we can detect, our brain is detecting and telling us this is a cat, but it's telling us with a particular probability, like 99.99999 is a cat, but we could be mistaken or something. Uh, and how does it apply to uh, business cases? So regular programming is quite deterministic. That means is we put some data in the database and uh, we just might extract that data and do something with it. Uh, this means if we have never seen something and we don't have that record in the database, in regular programming, we can't do anything about that because this is completely different than anything we've got. We can compare, but it's not going to be that precise uh, as machine learning will do for us. Uh, in comparison, in machine learning, we provide particular data to the model, to our brain, artificial brain, it learns how to uh, extract features and understand how to work with, uh, with such data. And then we display new information which our super brain never seen before and it somehow it learns how to work with it and how to uh, how to have a high probability of correct answer. I hope that makes sense. Uh, next concepts are going to be much more easier than that. So, how business could benefit from artificial intelligence? Well, first of all, uh, computers do some work better than humans. And if we tune computer properly, it can it can do like a lot of work uh, for which we need like real human beings uh, sitting in office for millions and millions of hours while computing is going to do exactly the same. For example, detect particular things on an image in the blink of an eye, and this is helping. Uh, for example. And I'm going to create another larger case study for that. But like, just imagine an application watching all possible news and reading what's written, uh, what, what's written at the bottom of the screen. 
and it's doing it in real time and analyzing the text at the bottom. But compared to human being, it's watching all possible channels which it could reach in this particular moment. And it's also watching all channel, all programs which were shown before. And I think this is just impossible for, for, for human being to achieve. And uh, the application was meant to be used by politicians in order to understand what kind of reference was uh, uh, in the media about their name. Uh, another case is uh, when we generate much more data when neural network can create images out of nothing. So the way it's working, uh, we just fed thousands and thousands of images uh, of, of bugs and then neural network is creating a design of a bug which people have never seen before. And it doesn't have to be super sleek or beautiful, but it's giving an idea for the human designer in which direction to move. Sometimes humans, uh, like they don't have a mood to, to create something. And in this case, in this case, uh, AI is helping them, give them, uh, give them a, a punch and uh, pushing them further to to have a, an insight. Uh, different data could be generated, like it could be like uh, models could generate uh, uh, well, I don't know, uh, interiors, uh, they could generate music, music notes, or even music pieces. They could uh, generate uh, well, just about, I mean, like a lot of things, like text also uh, is one of the big things for AI. Uh, yeah, it could, it, a computer can read, can understand, not everything. It's mathematics probably, uh, it's not going to be that easy for a computer to, to solve some some. Uh, tasks now, but we are getting there, and I think sooner or later a computer will solve very complicated things. Uh, but if yeah, I'm saying I'm saying this like computer can solve them if if a human being is writing in an appropriate manner. But what I mean uh, is like when computer is reading mathematical uh, task which is written written in text. It has some difficulties to tra to translate into mathematical language and then give it a solution. Another very big thing is real time video analytics. Uh, like imagine uh, imagine when you've got CCTV which is looking at your children in a daycare and model has trained that way that it can detect dangerous behavior. So when children are trying to climb on the fence. It's going to create a signal, like beeping, beeping, beeping signal uh, uh, in order to attract attention of uh, staff to do something. Or when children start fighting, also a model can recognize uh, the behavior and then also create a signal. So you've got 24-7 uh, help at your service, which is not eating, sleeping, having a rest, and so on and so forth. Yet, yeah. also, interesting part is when video analytics uh, is helping to, like on an image here, is helping to prevent particular road accidents. So, plenty of, of, of uh, ways to use it when you know how to use it. Uh, so, so practically, the very simple model 
uh, of a machine learning pipeline looks like. We have a data, we do something with it, we preprocess it, we make it ready to uh, extract features and uh, push it further for model training. Then we train our model, validate it, make, it, make sure the answers of the model are correct enough um, and consumable and we deploy the model and the model is working but more data we get we retrain the model and we repeat that cycle over and over again uh, like uh, getting solved our business problems uh, so what kind of steps should we take to launch a computer vision application? Uh, quoting, of course, uh, but usually we start from some research. We see what's on the shelf already, plenty of uh, different works, even with the open source code, uh, where you could grab some ideas uh, so first step is to find trained models uh, that's the very easy step however uh, sometimes it's working pretty well uh, so we do the research we see what kind of work has been done already what kind of results people did achieve and so on then we select some of them uh, which are, in our vision, are important and could be used. We look at the code, uh, ask authors permission to use it, or uh, getting the idea of the code and create our own code base. Uh, then we launch a training process if if there are no trained models and we couldn't buy them. Uh, this, this is taking some time uh, and so, some, some resources in order to um, buy GPU servers and make it running. Another, another step is to use some cloud services APIs, for example, AWS recognition API, which is allowing you to just download an image and get labels of the image. And the labels, in my opinion, are quite accurate. They could describe what's on an image and with which probability. So for example, another case study was uh, create an application which is uh, accepting customers' images and based on context of an image, it's, it's proposing particular frames or particular effects for an image. Uh, and this is done with AWS recognition service. So you just create the API application, which is accepting images, sent to AWS, get their labels back, uh, have a look at your database of frames and display frames you'd like. Another big part is, is ABM Watson. Uh, this is a very big thing, and there are plenty of trend models and uh, different API settings, uh, which also could be used in finance, uh, analytics, and some other, like plenty of other areas. Uh, that's quite easy as well to launch and, and deploy. So in order to conclude for today, uh, the steps are uh, supposed to be taken before you understand that your business will benefit from AI or computer vision. So do some research and some uh, MVP, uh, MVP little applications taking just chunks of your real data and making sure you're getting what you're expecting or at least you're getting more than 50% probability because like if you're getting 75, 80% probability uh, that you expect. That means model could be tuned or uh, architecture architecture could be changed, changed a bit and then you get like 99 and so on. 
Uh, <clears throat> there are some cases uh, where it could solve plenty of business tasks, and I will create uh, explanation for each business task we did solve already, which is going to give you an understanding of how can you apply in your particular case with uh, as less blood as possible. And of course, it's plenty of fun because uh, the technology is on the edge and uh, every day something new is appearing and most of the time is having high wow effect. Because when you see just, okay, now it's recognizing faces, now it's recognizing mood in the face, uh, now it's recognizing what you're looking at, and so on. So I hope you are going to enjoy uh, that little playlist. And it, it, the main case uh, I have started is I'm hoping it's going to help you to understand how you can make your business much more profitable with the uh, uh, power of NI. And uh, one more point is I want to break a uh, misunderstanding that AI and machine learning is something beyond comprehension. It's not easy, but it's doable. It's done by humans, for humans, and it's solving humans' problems. So please stay tuned.